determine the internal normal force. So that would be something like uh, N for normal force. The shear force, that would be V, and the moment, bending moment, M, in the beam at sections passing through points D and E. So I need six unknowns. I need to calculate the normal at D, the shear force at D, the bending moment at D, the normal at E, the, the shear force at E, and the bending moment at E. Six unknowns. All right. The point D is located just to the left of the four kip load. So here's our four kip load. It looks like it's applied exactly at D, so there's a little ambiguity. So put D a little bit to the left of the load. Smidgen to the left of the load. Let's take a look at what we have. We have a couple moment applied at this end of the beam. We have a roller support at A. We have, what is happening at B? It's pinned. We have a compound beam problem. All right, so it's pinned at B. Uh, we have a distributed load from B to C. And then what is the happening at C? Yeah. Fixed support, right. So, how do you want to attack this problem? What would be a recommended strategy? Free body diagram of the whole thing and get your supports. And so if you get the free body diagram of the whole thing, you'll be able to solve for A sub Y. And then coming over here, we'll have, uh, I'm looking at it, I would expect the moment at C due to that fixed support to look like that, just the way the beam is loaded. And uh, this is an upward directed C, Y, and C, X looks like it's zero. So I'm not even, you know, we, we put it in there. Okay, fine. Put C, X there. And then you do the sum of the forces in X and C, X is going to be zero. All right, so if you do the entire beam free body diagram, you'll find from the x equation, cx is equal to zero. All right, uh, let's solve for ay and cy. Actually, there's a third unknown, m of uh, c. One, two, three. Basically, we already used one of the equilibrium equations in the X, so you're not going to be able to solve for all three of those, are you? Okay, so let's get your, uh, what, what did you say, AY? AY is plus. Okay, what is your AY? 2.6. 2.6 KIP, that's correct. And CY is 1.5. And CY, and I guess I should have put my units in there, shouldn't I? The units are KIP. So I think you use section A, B, D to solve for A, Y. Isn't that right? Isn't that how you got AY? Um, for, for, yeah, on this section, right? Yes. Yeah, that's it, exactly. Thank you. And then you were able to solve for the AY. Okay. Then what we do is we can go over to the another section, and that section is B, E, C. So over here is B. So this is uh, BX, this is uh, BY, and we have a distributed load, 1.5 kip per foot times 6 foot, that gives us 9,000 pounds down, kip down, and then over here at the fixed support we had that M sub C, we had our C sub X which is 0, and we had our C sub Y. And so this B of X ends up to be zero, some of the forces in the X. Once we solve for A of Y is 2.6 kip up, what is B of Y? 
1.4 kip up some of the forces in the Y on member ABD. So we then bring that over to 1.4 kip down on member BEC. And then we can definitely calculate uh, the sum of the forces in the Y right here. 9 plus 1.4 down has a 10.4 up. If you solve for M sub C, do the sum of the moments. I would pick C, point C right here, 35.4 thousand pound foot. Now, finally, we're set up to go and get an internal. <laughs> we have to do a section where we cut in the member. Cut right through here. Again, point D is a little to the left. And so my section, free body diagram, would be of member A to D. And here is the A. We have our AY, which is 2.6 thousand pound. And then we have our um, six kip foot. And we have no uh, four kip load because it's a little to the right of where D is. Okay. And then we're going to have... Um, our ends of D, our shear force at D, and our bending moment at D. And now we can use that free body diagram of that section AD and solve some of the forces in the Y. So 2.6 up. This has to be 2.6 down. Um, that's right. 2.6 kip V sub D. Right there it is. And the normal, some of the forces in X, so that's zero. Agree. And then do the sum of the moments around point D on that section AD. I know these worksheets is a little crowded, but I'm going to need another free body diagram and finish this problem out. I'm going to do a section, and because the cut is at E, I'm going to do E to C. So I'll, I'll, I'll come in like this. It'll have the, the couple moment at C, M sub C. It'll have the CY right there, CY. And it'll have half of that distributed load, so it'll be 1.5 kip times 3. Isn't that turn out to be uh, 4.5? 4.5 kip in the middle, which is at uh, 1.5, 1.5. And, and then we have the normal at E, the shear at E, and, uh, man, this is cruddy, uh, cr cr crowded, not cruddy, but M sub C, the, not C, E, the bending moment at E. Now I need to solve for those. We do the sum of the forces in the X, and that gives us that N sub E is equal to zero. Okay, sum of the forces in the Y, where this C, Y, we already calculated it's 10.4. 10.4, so we calculate that B sub E with the 4.5 down, 10.4 up. Um, v sub E is up with the 4.5 down, calculates to be negative 5.9. 4.5 minus 10.4, 5.9. And the units on that are 1,000 pounds. And then we do the sum of the moments. I recommend around point E, and you do you calculate M sub E. Let me get a few people to verify M sub E is negative 10.95 kip. You got it? So we got two verifications. Anybody else verify it? Let me get a couple more verifications. I'm itching, itching to rush on, but there's no point rushing on if people can't make the calculations. Did you guys get it? You got it? Got it? Thank you. Thank you. Maybe I should copy this and then actually expand it so people can see it. 
edit. Let's do copy. Let's go down to the clean page, edit, paste. All right, so this is it right here. Now I'm going to do the equation is the sum of the moments around the point E equal to zero. What does that equation look like? Well, M sub E is applied. That's our bending moment. I know it's at E, and it's making it want to rotate in the clockwise, so I'll put it like that. And then uh, V sub uh, E does not, nor N sub E. But we do have the 4.5 kip at a moment arm of 3 foot. That's making it want to rotate in the clockwise. And then I also have the M sub C is uh, making it want to rotate in the clockwise. And we said that M sub C... Um, the M sub C was? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. It's And that the 4.5 kip is at 1.5 foot over on the beam. 1.5 foot over. Right. That's very good. Okay. And then we have the M sub C, which I solved for, is uh, 35.4 kip. Uh, foot, that's M sub C right there. That makes it want to rotate in the clockwise. And then only thing in the counterclockwise, look at that, I didn't leave enough room, so I have to wrap it around, is the Y sub C, so uh, up, or CY, I should say. And that has a moment arm distance of three foot. Okay, well, what is the magnitude of the Y sub C? The magnitude of Y sub C was 10.4 kip. So we can solve for m sub e is equal to 10.4 times 3 minus 35.4 minus 4.5 times 1.5. And m sub e should come in at the negative 10.95 kip foot. Got it? All right.